Hi, I'm Edward Thompson, welcome to a new episode of Pictures on My Mind, and in this episode I'll be looking at the rarest photo book that I own. Um, it also happens to be a book that's full of nudes, so I spent a lot of time cutting out loads of teeny tiny post-it notes to cover loads of teeny tiny nipples because of YouTube's nudity policy, which I did research, and it turns out for educational purposes you should be okay, but I thought, let's not take that risk, okay? So here we go. Um, this is the book, and this is how I was given it. Um, I was at a photography bookstore in London and there was a guy kind of walking around and it was really, I, I don't know, it was strange, right? Because I'm a kind of a guy on my own, I'm walking around being me and there's this older guy and he's walking around and he's being him. And I just had the over, kind of overall sense that people in the bookshop and other people there just felt, you know, I don't know, man, I, f I felt like they were treating him like a bit of a weirdo. And that's not really cool, is it? Anyway, um, and the reason was is that he shot a load of work in the 80s um, that was nudes around London and we got chatting and he pulled this out and I love the fact that if you don't know what this is um, this uh, bag is what kind of uh, your papers kept in when you're printing in a dark room and he put this book in it because obviously he felt um, the content was so graphic now the content is really not that graphic guys um, it's like glamour photography okay this is by by modern pornographic standards it's it's wild but the reason why it's my favorite book is because of the history um, so yeah, so here it is, east of Watford, north of Penge, uh, and it's, uh, it says memories, erring, rungen, and souvenirs. Um, just the captions alone are in English, German, and French, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so here we go. So essentially this guy, Horst M. Schlowensky, uh, was, had an office job, like a day job, and by night, well rather by day, uh, on his weekends, he'd be photographing his glamour models around London. And what's really interesting is the history, okay, and we're going to get into this now because check out parallels, it's the early 80s, there's a threat of a cold war, there's a threat of nuclear war, there's a really terrible conservative government who are doing terrible things, Margaret Thatcher's in power, yeah? Anyway, so here we go. East of Watford, north of Penge. And as I said, like, you cannot buy this book. I looked up to buy it online, you can't buy it. Um, it's printed in the early 90s, all the work was shot in the 80s. Um, yeah, so first published 1993, although a lot of the work was very much early 80s. Uh, the preface here, to those who have not heard of the place as well as those who recognise it, it is known as the City of London. Having lived nearby and worked for nearly 30 years here, witnessing the changes that have taken place when I was passing streets, buildings, places, I often wondered what had been there before. It was not until some 15 years later that I started to take photographs in order to refresh my memory in years to come. The intention was to take pictures of both old and new structures and landmarks, or rather insignificant places, as well as events and activities that may disappear in the future. Many lines, pages and chapters could be written about it, but when I use one word, like pranks, it may just describe the whole book. Here are a few picture samples from my collection. Do you remember the good old days too? Now, it talks a lot about architecture and building and change, but essentially, it's just a load of photos of glamour models, kind of, yeah, um, kind of flashing around London with um, Horst photographing them. Which I know you can be like rolling your eyes and say, well, that's the reason, Ed. That's why the people in the bookshop were like, oh, it's so terrible. But hold on a minute. Like, if this was uh, Helmut Newton, you'd be singing a different tune. If this was Boris Mikhailov, you'd be singing a different tune. So let me just fight this guy's corner because no one has. And I feel like he should have his dues because there's some great work in here, okay? Uh, so yeah, in this first shot here, you've got this woman uh, written up here on the, the shop. Maybe it says London Life and, and bam, there she is. And yeah, there's my, there's my tape. So you see, this is why you need to subscribe, guys. You don't want to know how long I spent cutting out those tiny little post-it notes. So yes, the least you could do is subscribe, okay? Right, here we go. Um, yeah, so throughout the book, you get lots of this where there's the glamour models posing with tabloid newspapers. And obviously at the time, the tabloids, kind of the sun, the star, are associated to having page three models in. And in some of the photos, you'll see Horst has sort of mirrored that with the, the women he's photographing and the photos of the glamour model in the paper. But what's really wild for me is the politics. So, okay, so this one's a bit more jokey. M MP stole Nonna's knickers, and that's kind of funny. But we're going to see how that goes later on in the book, because it gets a little bit more terrifying. Yes. Um, again... One thing that I found really interesting was the kind of reference to different kind of subcultural groups. So you've got this woman on the left here, and she's coming almost kind of post-punk, neuromantic kind of kind of vibe. The same with the woman on the right here, with the shoes, the sunglasses. So just stylistically, that's going on. But then this really surreal thing of, you know, they're by Tower Bridge. 
and essentially like kind of touristy areas. And I think time and time again, or maybe because Horst, you know, wasn't from London and he lived there, a lot of the sort of sites he's picked were sites around sort of tourist destinations. So again, um, loads and loads of brutalist architecture um, and then thrown in with the model as well. I mean, this pose is pretty wild right now, um, you know. There's lots of kind of Russian photographers who've done this kind of like performative nude thing with like people who aren't models. Obviously, Boris Mikhailov's well known for it. My kind of one time mentor, Sergei Chilikov, also known for it, too. The thing that changes it with horse for me is it's clearly, you know, these were glamour models and obviously he's paying them. And in some of it, you can really see kind of the power dynamic of kind of how they're relating to him and the camera and the kind of activity. So a lot of the time they are acting something out. So look at this shot here. You know, this got, got this woman here and she's the lookout. And, you know, essentially, she's sort of playing along. And obviously they were having to look out because they were like, okay, and you're gonna open your, your coat now and I'm gonna take the photo. But again, the fascinating thing for me, having lived in London, is the changes. So look, in the background here, you can see the Hayward Gallery. And again, working in lots of this kind of brutalist architecture and areas around the city of London. Uh, change. So here's a photograph of Old Street in 1998, and you can see this kind of old, kind of uh, more kind of industrial warehouse kind of building in the background behind the, the billboard for the flights to Philadelphia. And then fast forward to 1991, and you've got this massive new high rise, just kind of illustrating that change, but with kind of exactly the same composition. I kind of dig the glasses on the model as well in the early 90s, kind of those wraparound big shades. Okay, milk maidens, he's called them, but, um, if you don't remember, but predominantly everyone in the UK used to get their milk, milk, milk delivered by an electric milk float. Pretty forward thinking, right? Yeah, there'd be a little milk float driving around in the morning. The milkman would literally put pints of milk by your doorstep. The blue tits would come and peck and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so that was something that was going on. And again, that's been immortalized in these photos. Now, okay, so you've got the glamour models in there and they're holding the milk and posing. But again, there's something kind of quaint about it. You know, the fact that Horst was sort of gave me this book in the little black bag, I, I, looking back, it's, you know, it seems kind of ridiculous because it is, you know, it's just kitsch. It's a bit camp. It's a bit quaint. It's nothing more than you wouldn't see in a carry on film, you know, but um, here we go. Now, this, these are probably like my two favorite photographs in the book. And the reason is, is the newspapers. OK, eh, the reason is the newspapers. So this woman on the left, again, she looks kind of like proto cure fan um, goth, which is kind of cool. But her paper, um, part of it says Reagan it was, and we can't see it because Horst or someone has torn the bottom of the newspaper off. And now you can see the breasts of the model who's on the page three, along with the breasts of our goth model. But also Reagan. Now, if you're not aware, like Ronald Reagan was president of America during the Cold War. So there's huge stuff going on politically and sort of globally. Um, on the flip uh, page here, on, on the other, other page, we've got a woman and she's going by Tower Bridge, but it's the Daily Star and it says it stand by to invade. This is terrifying stuff. What's going on? Yeah. So that's that really weird thing where, you know, imagine horses running around with these kind of like goth punk glam models. It's the Cold War. We could be blown up by a nuclear like wave any minute, but yeah, let's just run around London and do these weird kind of pop up punk pranks and yeah, expose yourselves and do these kind of photos. It's so, it's yeah, for me it's wild. For me it's wild. So again, to the subculture thing, we've got these uh, two uh, Cure fans here. I mean, I've got to say the one on the left, dead ringer for Robert Smith, dead ringer for Robert Smith, and then we've got these more punky girls on the right who are being quite punk and they're sticking out their tongues. So again, and he's even titled Everything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. I'm not sure if that's alluding to the kind of like, that kind of era. Obviously I was like a baby at the time, I don't remember. Was there any parallels of stuff between goths and punks? I don't know. Anyway, were they, were they, was there conflict? I don't know. Anyway. This page, right? This double page spread, um, for those who weren't like valuing it and were like, Ed, what's this, this funny guy who works in office just shooting the glamour models? This could be Helmut Newton. The one on the right in particular, that hard light, the pose, everything about it, totally could be a brilliant Hel Helmut Newton picture, okay? So again, giving Horst some of his dues here, man. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So again, on the photo on the left hand side here, we've got the use of the tabloid newspaper, The Sun, and you can see it says Maggie's Monday Massacre. Now, of course, that was Margaret Thatcher. Don't even know what that's referencing politically, but obviously it could be like reshuffling of the cabinet, that kind of stuff. 
And yeah, there we go. So that's incorporated into it on the old car. And again, with the model on the right, um, very kind of neuromantic, very kind of like punk, but like punk into the early 80s. So yeah, kind of cool. Lots of buildings. So on the left here, you can see the Royal College of Music and it's titled Festival Hall. So I'm not so sure on the history there. Um, did that become the Royal Festival Hall? Possibly. Anyway, let me know in the comments. There you go. Um, some more people cavorting around. This lady in the snow. And again, there's not too many photos where the models are really engaging with Horst or with the camera. And I really like the way this model with the woolly hat in the snow is really kind of staring to camera. It's a very strong gaze. It's pretty cool. So if you look at this photograph, you can see this black British model looking directly to camera, engaging the gaze, engaging you, the viewer, looking straight at you. And right at the top, it says, on this historic site, Shakespeare's Globe Theatre will be rebuilt starting 1985. So we know, we know it's early 80s, and it's even before the Globe Theatre was built, but it's the graffiti in the background. Wake up whitey. Now, we can't see quite what it says uh, behind the model, it looks like it says join NF now. Now for those who aren't aware, NF stood for the National Front and they were a far-right organization, a racist organization. Um, basically they were not happy with the way that multiculturalism was coming into the UK. Um, obviously uh, people from all over the world coming into the UK and yeah, obviously hated it. And yeah, militant racist organisation, dangerous racist organisation. So the fact that Horst has placed that black British model in front of that signage, it's like a clear declaration of kind of where he stands. And yeah, I think that's really cool. And it's not something you'd expect from just like a whimsical set of uh, glamour models photographed around London. And that's why I find this image so arresting. So this one's kind of cool. So it's kind of a weird composition. We can see the Houses of Parliament in the background. There's a bit of motion blur on her foot and it just is titled Tripped and her shoes come off. And it's just her whole pose is just so weird. Again, there's sort of performative aspects in this book, which I find quite interesting. Um, it wouldn't be akin to a miss, like I said, to some of the kind of Russian photographers of kind of the 70s and 80s. So it's, it's kind of cool that he obviously had that in mind around a similar period. Now, he ends up in the city of London, I'm assuming, because of the photos at the end, what I vaguely remember what he told me when I met him and he gave me this book in 2016, that he did work in an office. Uh, so we get lots of these high-rise, wide-angle, low buildings, trying to show as much of the building as possible, but also showing the model. And this shot on the left, again, I'm not sure of the period, it must be early 80s, just judging by the big hair, we're maybe into kind of hair metal phase, so maybe it's a bit later in the 80s. Um, obviously very voluptuous, but look at this business guy in the background. Can you see him? He's literally about to walk into the scene. We can actually see him there. That's a pretty cool shot. And again, this model on the, on the other spread here, again, this very low angle. Um, this sort of uh, starts to sort of play more with leather. So we're getting more into kind of potential fetish scenes. So there's sort of leather boots, leather jackets, that kind of jazz uh, later on into the book. Sort of mirroring, obviously, kind of what's going on in the scene at the time. Again, more of these low angle building shots, presumably around where he worked in London. And again, throughout the book, you know, there's a few motifs he comes back to, and one will be these kind of low angle high rise shots. Um, I have obviously put post-it notes over these upskirt images, but just to say, even if you saw them, it's pubic hair. Like, it's it's just pubic hair there. It's, it's not graphic. Um, just again, looking and thinking about kind of modern pornography, this is like, it's like a carry-on film, okay? So, there we go. So again, some more of these sort of strange, brutalist buildings here. I forget the name of this one. Um, I've had a photo taken by there, I can't remember by a friend, but I wasn't quite like that in the photo. Thanks, Claudia. Um, but yeah, anyway, so there's this building here again in, in the city of London. And just to think about Paul sort of walking around with these women and just sort of being like, hey, now, you know, it's just, it's so bizarre, isn't it? Kind of surreal. Again, these very kind of 
even becoming more abstract now, he's maybe found some kind of strange corporate art, I'm not quite sure what that pyramid is, but using that kind of brutalist line and leading lines drawing you in, and we did very sort of surreal angles, I mean, it's interesting to see, obviously, he seems to improve uh, as with the photographs as he's going along as well, although these photos don't have timeline, like, don't have a date on. Again, no sort of way of dating these photographs. Again, very kind of goth, punky looking women. The woman on the right, obviously, much more gothic. The woman on the left, much more punky with the corset and the bleached hair and the boots. Yeah, again, really nice shot here. Almost kind of like that kind of surrealist kind of 80s image where we've got so much negative space and this model kind of leaning back and the angle just seems quite bizarre, and then all these buildings clustered at the top, there is something inherently surreal to me about this image, and I think it's a really good photograph. Uh, this is another really cool one. So in both these photos you can see the old British telecom tower, which is still there, but, but not used, and there's this funky cool lady coming out of the telephone box with her big sunglasses, and again it's a really nice composition, nice leading lines, you can see there's even a guy in the background kind of walking away, you know. Compositionally, there are some good photographs in this book. So again, a, a photograph illustrating train change. So on one side it says Finsbury Square 1985, and you've got the woman leaning out of the old school kind of British uh, telephone box, or the red traditional telephone box. And then on the right, if you remember these guys, the newer telephone boxes, which you don't really see much anymore, but that's how they looked, those guys. A few more here of the telephone boxes, again with the models coming out of the telephone boxes. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I still, I just find them quite, quite, the majority of them quite quaint, quite kitsch, quite camp. Um, I don't have a problem with the nudity at all. I feel like just by looking at the gaze of the models and what they're doing and where they are, it, was, it feels like quite a collaborative process. There is one photograph we're getting to though, which is a little bit more questionable. Um, oh yeah, these ones are fun. So again, it's the models, and clearly he was out photographing, and there were some builders, and you know, who knows? It's this clear up construction. Could this be the construction of what became Canary Wharf? Could this be the Isle of Dogs? Around the same period, mid-80s? Maybe it is. Again, these older ladies here now, walking around Broadgate, and he's written today. So obviously, yeah, it looks like it's uh, possibly 92, 93. And again, just looking at the leather, um, looking at the kind of PVC, and it's sort of leaning more towards fetish clothing. Again, jumping, whimsical, playful, just seems quite rather silly, you know? It's not offensive, it's just, it is what it is. Um, again, some change here, so on the left, it's both the same location, so the woman walking up here, and then the very pregnant kind of, I don't know what sort of group, it's like she's kind of a bit neuromantic, kind of a bit punky, but really cool, and obviously very pregnant, um, but again, it just makes for a really interesting picture, and just having her looking towards camera of the sunglasses again, I, you know, much better than the, the shot on the left, there's something really about that, so again, showing that change, and kind of fun. Now, a difficult pairing here. So the one on the left, she's got the headscarf on, I'm getting the whole babushkery kind of vibe. It says AD 1922, is that what he was kind of going for? But on the flip side, you've got this woman, it says question mark, question mark, question mark, BC, rear of Phoenix Theatre, and she's quite old. And we're, for me anyway, well into Boris Mikhailov territory with this image. Um, she doesn't, she's not like any of the other models in the book. Um, She's very old, you worry ethically about why she would have posed for this. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those grayer areas for me. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know Horst, I've got no contact with the guy. I tried to look up how to find him when making this. I have no way of finding out where he is or even if he's still alive. But yeah, for me again, yeah, for those who kind of were kind of giggling when they saw him with his book um, at the bookshop I was at in London, um, he has some amazing photographs in this book, you know? And it's a shame that people, for whatever reason, just didn't really take him seriously. Um, but yeah, anyway. There's one of my favourite photos in the book. Oh, coming up now. This is it. So these two are kind of cool. So the one on the left, amazing. So it's an SDP poster tr for, for an election campaign. But what it really is, it's alluding to Cold War. 
because it's a picture of Margaret Thatcher and it might have been Heseltine on the right. So they're the two choices of the Labour and Conservative uh, party at that moment in time. And this is a third party vote thing. And they've got them with like gas masks on um, because it's like, hey, nuclear war, we're all going to die. OK, and what has Horst done? He's got the model here with the little leg warmers, with the funny big sunglasses, having a whimsical little photo shoot by it. It's pretty wild for me because like, well, it's a bit like now. Is there a threat of an imminent world war? Is there nuclear superpowers going to go do crazy wild things? And at that point, Horst is like, yeah, let's get these glamour models and we're going to walk around London and take some funny prank photos and have some fun. It's yeah, it's wild to me. But anyway, yeah. This is why this book is so interesting, because it's more than just a collection of like semi-amateur glamour model photographs. It's a historical document because he didn't do it in the studio. He shot it around London. And how much has London changed in 40 years? Loads. And at the same time, how much do these photographs mirror what's going on right now in our world? With the current state of the Conservative government here in the UK for the past 13 years, with uh, wars going on in Ukraine, it's all, you know, yeah, there's parallels, okay guys? The shot on the right I really dig because it's, I think, at his office. Because he said he worked in an office, he worked with machines, and it's some kind of weird service manual. Maybe he worked repairing uh, equipment in these offices, maybe that's where he was going around, who knows? Maybe that's where he met some of the people who became his models. I don't know any of these stories. So these next series of photos are all around offices. So here's this lovely lady here and she's looking through like a retro kind of computer printout. This woman on the right here with a really old computer and it says Purchase Ledger Introduction Phase 1 Phillips. I don't know what's going on. But again, sort of alluding to the fetish scene, she's got some high sort of kinky boots on and the title is At Work With Spurs. So again, sort of very playful, um, kind of a bit silly. And what you've been waiting for, I should have preloaded at the start, there is a woman in this book who looks like a dead ringer for Margaret Thatcher. Totally. And yeah, it's a double page spread here on the left. It says dance modern. And you've got this woman and she's dancing. She's got the big hair. Oh, I just realized something in the video. You can see her pubic hair. I've put my finger over it now. I will now talk about it again. <laughs> so she's dancing around. She's got the big hair. She's, you know, she's having a great time. But on the other page, this woman, how much does she look like Margaret Thatcher? Oh my God, she's doing an amazing high kick. She's having the time of her life. Pretty sure it's not Margaret Thatcher, but there we go. So, and I think, yeah, I think that's it. That's the book. Um, for me, the rarest book I own, um, you can't buy it. The fact the photographer gave it to me for free in a funny little paper bag, cause he was so like, oh, this is pornographic. The fact really it's quite kitsch and quite camp and quite historical and that you can't buy it. And I can't find the photographer. It's a mystery. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, put a lot of effort into this one, so please give me a subscribe. I'm getting there. And to all those you guys who subscribed, I think I'm at like 450 subscribers now, which is amazing, because I started the show 12 days ago. Um, so yes, thank you kindly.